No home remodeling project is complete without good lighting. Today I'm going to show you how to build these custom rustic reclaimed wood with steel accent panel wall sconces to help set that mood in your new space. Welcome to DIY The Art of Wood. I'm Jeremy. Well, it's been a while since I've been here in the shop and I've got to tell you it's great to be back. I just finished digging through my scrap pile and I think I found enough lumber and plywood to build these wall sconces. And while I was digging through this scrap pile, I came to the realization that this is a disgrace, even for a scrap pile. I mean, this is a complete mess. It took me about 45 minutes just to dig through this whole pile, just to find these few pieces here. I mean, it's a complete disaster. Look at it. It's a random mix of OSB and plywood and lumber and melamine and who knows what else is inside there. So obviously I'll need to do something about this, but that's a project for another day. But for now, I have my lumber, have my plywood, so let's get started. Let's start with building the frames for the wall sconces. For this project, I'm using scrap pieces of 2x4s to build the frame. To conserve material and keep these wall sconces light, I'm cutting the lumber down to one inch square stock on the table saw. This is a quick operation. Just set the rip fence to one inch, rip the 2x4 down, then take those pieces and rotate them 90 degrees and rip again, and you'll end up with a bunch of pieces of one inch square stock. Here I'm using the old rip and flip method to make the second cut to square the pieces to one inch. To keep your fingers away from the blade, rip the board about halfway down the length, stop, then flip the board end for end, making sure to keep the same side against the rip fence. Then starting from the other end, just rip it the rest of the way. The blade will meet up where you stop to flip and it's just that easy. Keep in mind that I am using framing lumber here, and often these 2x4s aren't perfectly straight to begin with. This type of lumber is usually bowed, cupped, or twisted a little, sometimes a lot. So your square stock may not be perfectly straight and square, but for this project, that's okay. This square stock is for the interior frame of the wall sconces and will never be seen. And these are rustic looking wall sconces anyway. A little roughness actually adds to the charm. You can always joint and plane the 2x4s to get them perfectly flat and square before you rip them down into square stock. But for this build, it really isn't necessary. Just do your best to use the straightest 2x4s you have, and it will be just fine. Next, let's hop over to the miter saw to cut our pieces to length. In order to make sure all the pieces are cut to the exact same length, set up a stop block on your saw. Trying to measure, mark, and cut to a pencil line on each piece will only lead to inconsistent length pieces. It's almost impossible to make exact repeated cuts that way. But, if you use a stop block, you'll get exactly the same length pieces every time. Here I'm using a speed square clamped to an auxiliary fence I attached to the miter saw fence. If you don't have a miter saw, that's okay. You can still accomplish these cuts on the table saw or even use a hand saw with a miter box. Just be sure to set up some type of stop block so you get consistent cuts every time. If you are using a table saw to make these cross cuts, don't use the rep fence as a stop block. That can lead to binding and kickback. If you want to take a look at how to safely make cross cuts on a table saw, check out this Woodworking Basics video on one of my favorite channels, Woodworking for Mere Mortals. Click the link that's about to pop up on the screen, but be sure to come back and finish watching this video. To make these cuts on the miter saw, you will need to attach an auxiliary fence to the fence on the miter saw. An auxiliary fence is simply a board screwed onto the fence. There are mounting holes on the back of the miter saw fence just for this purpose. You will need this auxiliary fence on this project because the fence on the saw just isn't long enough to attach a stop block to for the longer pieces. To attach an auxiliary fence, find a nice flat straight board that is about 48 inches long. MDF or melamine works great for this. Press it flat against the miter saw fence and flat against the table. Then from the back, drive a couple screws through the saw fence into the board. Make sure the screws are short enough that they won't poke through the other side of your new auxiliary fence. Then just cut through the auxiliary fence with the saw and you're ready to go. This auxiliary fence will not only extend the length of the fence for attaching stop blocks, but because you cut the auxiliary fence with a saw blade, it will create a zero clearance slot that you can pull a tape measure from to set the distance on your stop block. For these wall sconces, we went a bit on the big side with overall finish dimensions of 22 and a half inches by eight and a half inches by seven inches. Those dimensions include the plywood and finished trim pieces, which will come a little later in this build. If you want to build these to the same size, for two matching sconces, you'll need to cut eight pieces each at 21 inches, 
four and a half inches and five inches. You may notice that I have nine pieces of each size here, but that's because it's always a good idea to cut an extra piece or two, if you can spare the material, just in case you make a mistake. You can make these sconces whatever size you like, go big, real big, or maybe go small for that minimalist approach. Just be sure you don't go too small because you do still need to be able to reach your hand inside to install the light bulbs and attach these to the wall. Get ready to bust out the wood glue because it's assembly time. For this project I'm just using simple butt joints, which go together quickly and will be plenty strong for these. You can get fancy here if you want and use whichever type of joinery you like, but since these joints won't be visible, going fancy really isn't all that necessary. Some may argue that gluing the end grain like this will lead to a weak joint because the end grain will soak up most of the glue and not leave enough glue to bond the two pieces together. While this is true, end grain does soak up glue like a sponge, there is a way around that. Drop a blob of glue on each end, then force the glue down into the end grain by massaging it into the end grain with your finger. This will preload and saturate the end grain with glue. Then apply a second coat of glue as normal and these joints will be plenty strong. Using a strap clamp like this makes this type of glue up a breeze. Check the description below for a link to take a look at this clamp. Be sure to wipe up any glue squeeze out and check for square as you go. From here, it's rinse and repeat until you have two assembled frames. So I'll just quit talking and let the camera roll for a minute. For this project I'm using some scrap 8th inch plywood from a previous project. 8th inch plywood is a good choice here as these don't need the additional strength of thicker plywood and it will also help keep the cost and the weight down. Measure and cut 4 pieces of plywood per wall sconce. The plywood only needs to cover the sides, the top and bottom will be left open. Now that the frames are assembled and the glue has had a chance to dry, we can attach the plywood. Evenly spread on a layer of wood glue on each side of the frame and nail the plywood in place. I'm using crown staples on this project since the plywood is so thin, but light gauge finish nails will work too. Be sure to set the depth adjustment correctly on your finish nailer so you don't overdrive the nails. Next we can turn our attention to cutting the steel accent paneling. You'll need three panels per wall sconce, one cut to fit the front and two each for the sides. On this project I'm using a 24 gauge Resibon steel panel, but you can use any type of steel paneling you like. Or forget the steel paneling altogether and instead use a nice species of plywood on the previous step and apply whichever type of stain or finish that will make these things pop. Or you can just slap on a coat of paint if you like, or finish them off with some reclaimed boards for a barn door look. Hey, they're your sconces, just go for it! To cut the steel paneling, scribe a line with a marker on the plastic film using a straight edge. Then clamp the panel down to your work surface using a scrap piece of wood to prevent the clamp from marring the panel. Make sure the edge of the panel is hanging over the edge of your work surface. Pop a metal cutting blade in a jigsaw and let the metal shavings fly. Definitely wear hearing protection because cutting steel is extremely loud and also wear safety glasses so you don't get any shrapnel shot into your eyeballs because that really hurts. To attach the steel panels to the wall sconces, the crown stapler works great. But here again, nails can work too. The metal is thin enough that the nails should punch right through. As an alternative, you can skip the nail gun and just pound in some nails with a hammer. 
That is, of course, if shooting nails into steel paneling scares you a little. However you do it, just don't forget to peel back the plastic film around the edges as you go. Before we finish these off and attach the trim pieces, it's time to install the electrical wiring in light socket. If electrical wiring isn't your thing, don't worry, I've got you covered. I'll walk you through how to do this. I did make a little mistake here though. I should have done this step a little earlier before I attached the plywood to the frame. It would have been much easier to install all the electrical parts before sealing the sides up. So don't make the same mistake I made. But anyway, let's get to it. I picked up all these lamp components at Home Depot. Except for the cord, I just robbed that off an old ugly lamp. If you don't have an old ugly lamp handy, Home Depot sells lamp cord too. Check the description for links to all these lamp components. First, drill a large hole in the back panel to feed the power cord through. Drilling a large hole like this will give you some flexibility when installing these sconces later. The platform that the light sockets will be attached to will sit in the middle of the wall sconce, so drill the hole so that either the top or bottom edge of the hole will line up with the light socket platform. Next, cut a small piece of 8th inch plywood to use as a platform to attach the light sockets. You'll need to cut this platform so it spans from front to back inside the sconce, but it only needs to be about 2 or 3 inches wide. Mark the center of the platform and drill a hole for the threaded light socket nipples. Next, insert a threaded light socket nipple through the hole in the platform so an equal length is protruding through each side. Then secure the threaded nipple in place with hex nuts on each side, followed by a second hex nut to act as a jam nut to keep everything locked down. Then twist the light sockets onto the end of each threaded nipple. Don't over tighten these, but they do need to be snug. Next, separate the two strands of the lamp cord and color the end of one strand black to mark as the hot line. The unmarked strand will be neutral. Marking these strands will help make the connections now and also later when you go to install these. Then strip back the outer jacketing of both strands to expose enough copper wire to wrap around the posts on the lamp socket. Back the screws out a few turns on each post on the socket and wrap one strand of copper wire clockwise around the shank of one of the screws and the other strand of wire around the other screw. It is really helpful to twist the individual strands of exposed copper wire before you wrap it around the shank of the screw. This helps to keep the individual copper strands together. Then tighten down the screws. Be careful to not let any loose copper wire stick out around the screw as that could lead to a short. For this it really doesn't matter which strand of wire, hot or neutral, goes to which post. Cut the end of the lamp cord, leaving yourself plenty of length to work with, and then repeat this process on the other light socket. Don't forget to mark this end with a black marker as well. Finally, we need to connect the two hot wires coming off of each socket together and the two neutral wires coming off of each socket together, which will then be connected to a lead wire. This lead wire will then be connected to your electrical wiring when you install these wall sconces. To connect the wires together, strip back the ends of the two hot strands coming off of the sockets and twist them together. Also strip back the end of the hot strand on the lead wire then twist that onto the two hot strands. Be sure to twist clockwise and then twist a wire nut on to connect all three hot wires together. Repeat this process for the neutral wires. Since the lamp cord I'm using was robbed off an old ugly lamp, it still has a plug on the end and we can test this out. Let's see. And that's a bingo. Before installing these, I like to double check that all the screws and wire nuts are tight and I also wrap electrical tape around the wire nuts and around the light sockets. Now we just have to set it in place. This is where I wish I would have done this a little earlier. To install this little platform, I cut some of the extra 1 inch square stock into 4 posts that I glued to the inside of the wall sconce. These platforms just rest on the top of the posts and are screwed down. This part would have been way easier if I had done it earlier. For the finishing touches, we need to cut our corner trim and the trim for the top and bottom edges. To tie these wall sconces into the family room remodel project, I'm using the same wood planks that are on the feature wall for the corner trim, and the same Montana ghost wood that I use for the door and window trim for the top and bottom edge trim. For the trim, the width is really up to you. Set the rip fence on your table saw to whatever width you decide on, and just go for it. Just be sure that the corner trim will be wide enough to cover the nails or staples on the steel paneling, and that the top and bottom edge trim will overhang beyond the corner trim slightly for a nice clean look. The amount of overhang is up to personal preference, but about a half inch usually works well. Then cut all the pieces to length and attach them into place with finished nails. 
18 gauge Bradnells are about the best choice here. They have plenty of holding power, but don't leave giant holes behind. If this is your first time here, thanks for checking out my channel. And if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. I have a lot of exciting projects planned. And don't be shy, say hi and leave a comment below. For all my returning subscribers, thanks for following me on this journey. I'll see you all on the next one.